February 16th, 2021 uh, City Council meeting. Uh, first of all, I want to welcome uh, uh, the Helena, West Helena World and KJIW and any other media that might be on and any guests uh, as well. We we'll welcome all of you. Uh, real very quick update. I can return to this in a minute because we have a guest we want to go to first, but um, we uh, uh, obviously in a, in a weather emergency, um, we're expecting another storm later tonight and we're anxious to see what that brings. Uh, we had our road graders out today uh, or our backhoes are not really road graders, but we may do want to thank them for what they were able to do. Um, we, um, I'm getting a little tired or getting a little bit too good at this uh, emergency um, order business. Uh, this is about our fourth or fifth. We're also still in a water emergency and I'll try to, uh, if we have time, brief you more on that. We got a lot accomplished in the last couple of weeks. Uh, but in the meantime, I want to recognize, uh, Andre, you're on here. I might let you recognize Keith Rand with the Arkansas Municipal League, uh, if you would. Oh, Mr. Here. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, I yes. you know. oh, had We hadn't called Roe yet, have we? Right. Ms. Ramsey, you want to call, call Roe? Thank, thank you, Mr. Joe. Sorry. Okay. Uh, forward. Here. Franklin. St. Columbia. Here. Etherly. Here. Rocket. Here. Davis. Mr. Etherly, I saw you signed in. Here. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you, Mr. Joe. Is that what you had? Uh, Mr. St. Columbia, is that what you were? trying to remind me about my apologies. I get, got a little carried away there, I guess. Um, thank you, Ms. Ramsey. Okay, uh, Mr. Valley, you want to represent, uh, recognize or introduce our guest? Uh, yes, sir. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Andre Valley, City Attorney. Uh, uh, Attorney Keith Wren is the outside counsel. He's the conflict counsel and outside counsel with Arkansas Municipal League. He's handled several cases for us in the past from West Allen all the way through the consolidated cities. And he represents us on the case involving Dwayne Nate Harvey versus the city of Helena, West Helena. Uh, he has been counsel on that now for a few months. Uh, so with two other lawyers up before him who had, uh, for various reasons, had to get off the case. But he's here tonight to talk to us about the current status relating to uh, procedurally what he intends to do. And he may possibly talk about uh, the status of offers, as you all are aware mediation before. And uh, with that, I yield to Attorney Wren. Thank you, Andre. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Keith Wren. Uh, I'm an attorney in Little Rock. I uh, am not an employee of the Arkansas Municipal League, but uh, I'm frequently used by, their, by them for their outside counsel for various reasons. Uh, in this particular case, uh, the first attorney on this case was uh, Amanda Lefevre, uh, she represented the city and also Virgil Green. Well, when Mr. Green filed his own lawsuit against the city, then she had a, she had a conflict and she had to get off the case. So the, this case was then given to, to an attorney named Chris Michaels. You may all have met him at a mediation that occurred about two years ago. Um, Chris subsequently left uh, the private practice of law to go uh, take another job. And so then the file was given to me. At that point, um, I really didn't know anything about the case. Uh, all I knew is that there was a lot of documents that I had and some that I later learned that I didn't have. I won't go through all of the uh, boring details of it, but I, I'm, I'm gonna try to hit some of the highlights. So Mr. Harvey, through his attorney, uh, filed a lawsuit with multiple claims. One of the claims was that he said he did not get paid overtime pay when he actually worked overtime. He said that he was not given uh, health insurance benefits. He was not given um, 
vacation or sick pay or holiday pay uh, as is required by law for police officers. Um, he also made a claim that Virgil Green retaliated against him in violation of his civil rights. And he also made uh, a racial discrimination claim and uh, some other claim that, that he, he later dismissed. So before Mr. Uh, Michaels got off of the case, uh, he filed a, a motion for summary judgment asking a former Judge Proctor to dismiss many or all of the, the plaintiff's claims. Uh, for various reasons, some of which involved one of the attorneys having to have surgery and then uh, the plaintiff's lawyer had to have surgery and then the COVID-19 crisis came. Um, the judge basically never ruled on the motions to dismiss or the motion for summary judgment. Judge Proctor, as you know, retired and basically his last act on the bench was to just sum summarily deny all of the motions. What that meant or what it means is that he's gonna let the case go to trial. Virgil Green individually uh, has the right to take a unusual type of appeal. It's called an interlocutory appeal. It's a taking an appeal in the middle of the case. The city doesn't have the right to do that. The new judge has set this case for trial in April, but I don't think he was aware that Virgil Green had taken the interlocutory appeal. So it doesn't make case, doesn't make sense to try the case twice potentially. So I suspect that that date is gonna come off and that the uh, new date will be sometime after Virgil Green's appeal is completed. In the meantime, uh, I had the opportunity to dive into this file, uh, which was quite voluminous and go through all of the records and try to figure out what is what. So uh, in that process, it is my opinion that at various times through to the end of 2013 to through the end of 2016, Mr. Harvey worked uh, basically full-time. He, he only had a part-time certification, but he basically was worked consistently 40 hours a week plus. Um, so he at times worked overtime. There were times most of the time he was paid appropriately. There was sometimes, I believe, through human error that he did not get paid overtime. There was at least one paycheck where he was inadvertently paid overtime pay for his entire paycheck for all of the hours. So he got a huge overpayment. When you tally it all up, um, at least in my opinion, it appears that he was actually overpaid a little bit um, by a, a few hundred dollars. So I don't know uh, that the law is unclear and it's not been interpreted as to whether or not he would win on the days that he didn't get paid overtime and he would lose on the pay days that he did, or if it's viewed you know, on, on the whole for the whole time period. Uh, I don't know the answer to that and there's no law interpreting it. Um, but that, that part of the claim, at least in my opinion, is fairly minimal. The documents show that he was offered health insurance, so I don't think that's an issue. Um, the uh, lot fee benefits, he's claimed that he did not get paid lot fee benefits appropriately. Uh, that may be an issue because although for about a three three year period, he worked full time with the you know, I think one month or possibly two months, uh, his lot fee contribution was only at the rate of a volunteer officer, which is like five or $6 a month. Uh, additionally, for the first year, there, there are three Arkansas statutes that were written in the 1960s. They say that uh, police officers have to be given holiday pay for all of the holidays that the city recognizes. They say that police officers have to get 20 sick a year and police officers have to get uh, uh, 15 vacation days a year. Unfortunately, those laws were written back in the 1960s and they just say police officer. They don't say full-time, they don't say part-time, there's no case interpreting it. So in theory, at least, a volunteer police officer who works one hour a week could be entitled to all these benefits. That doesn't make sense. But I can't say that the plain language of the statute doesn't say that. There's no cases interpreting it. So I don't know what the outcome of that would be eventually. 
he did not get paid holiday pay for the first year that he worked full time. He at least it appears he got holiday pay for the subsequent two years. Then uh, he, as far as I could see, was never paid sick pay or vacation pay. As you all may recall, uh, in 2016, his employment was terminated, uh, and then he had a uh, appealed it to the council, and the council reinstated him, but gave him a um, a suspension without pay. And that occurred in August of 2016, but uh, he was not put back to work until sometime in January of uh, 2017, and he's claiming that he was retaliated against by the chief uh, during that period of time for refusing to by refusing to put him back on the work schedule. That's a swearing match. Virgil Green says that he never came to me. Um, who a jury will believe on that? I, I don't know the answer to that. Some of the claims that he has made are what are called fee switching statutes, which means that if he wins anything more than a nominal amount, uh, the city will have to pay his attorney's fees and costs. Um, so having said all of that, that brings me to where uh, we are in the case now. Uh, after having done my analysis of the case, uh, I spoke with Mayor Smith I spoke with John Wilkerson at the Arkansas Municipal League, and I said that given that it certainly appears the city may have some liability here, it's probably going to be best to try to get this case resolved in a manner that everybody can live with rather than to risk a potentially bad outcome at trial. So after talking to Mayor Smith and John Wilkerson, it was determined that we would try to see if Mr. Uh, Harvey would uh, accept the offer that had been previously made at the mediation, which occurred two years ago, which was, I think, $60,000. That offer was, was uh, remade to Mr. Harvey, and his attorney <clears throat> rejected it on his behalf and made a counteroffer of $180,000. John Wilkerson is not interested, and I don't recommend that you be interested in uh, accepting that counteroffer. So that brings us to kind of a crossroads in the case, because at this point, we either need to just gear up for trial and go see what happens, or we need to try to get it resolved. There is a mechanism for trying to get people to think seriously about the shortcomings of their case and to uh, get more serious about settlement, and that, that is called an offer of judgment. There is a provision in the Arkansas Rules of Civil Procedure that say that if you make an offer of judgment to a, a plaintiff, they can accept that. In, in other words, you say, we will pay you X amount of dollars and they can accept it. And it's just as if a judgment were rendered against the, the person making the offer. So um, the upside of it is that if you make an offer of judgment, say for X dollars and the case goes to trial and the plaintiff wins, but he gets less than the amount of the offer of judgment, then you're not responsible for his fees and costs after the date of the offer of judgment. So in other words, if we make a reasonable offer of judgment to the plaintiff and he accepts it, then we're gonna be in the position of having to sort out what his attorney's fees and costs are right now. On the other hand, if we make him an offer of judgment and he does not accept it, and he goes to trial, and even if he wins, um, his attorney is going to be taking the risk of working for free from this day forward. So it's a tool to encourage settlement. So I've discussed this with John Wilkerson at the Arkansas Municipal League. I, I've discussed it with uh, Mark Hayes, with Mayor Smith, and former Mayor Hollowell, who's also a defendant in this case, and Virgil Green through his attorneys. We are all in agreement that an offer of judgment to the plaintiff should be made in the amount of $25,000. As I said, what that means is if they, if they accept it, we're on the hook to pay them $25,000, plus we'll have to contend with their attorney's fees and costs. It is a risk, but it is my opinion that it is a risk worth, worth taking at this point. My analysis of the case is that um, Mr. Harvey is probably owed about $20,000 in benefits. I don't think that anyone is going to believe 
whatever his credentials were law enforcement wise that uh, if you're going to work somebody 40 plus hours a week that they're not entitled to the full time benefits provided under the law. So uh, as we sit here now, that is uh, that is the plan uh, to to make this offer of judgment. And if they don't accept it, then um, if we go to trial and they win and they get more than that, well, then we're we're, we're back in the same position. Um, but if they go to trial and they win and they, they get less than that, then we will not at, at, we will be cutting our losses. So uh, that is uh, all I have to say on the matter, and uh, I stand uh, for any questions. Keith, will you also, Andre Valley, Keith, will you also explain the coverage on it when you say the offer? Yes, yes. Okay, so um, an, another factor in this case is this. The Arkansas Municipal League Legal Defense Program uh, provides coverage for many types of claims, but they also have different types of coverage for different types of claims. So for example, in a civil rights case where say it's a claim against a police officer for uh, arrest without probable cause or, or excessive force or something like that, the Municipal League's coverage in most of those cases is 90-10 coverage, meaning that the league will pay 90% of any ju judgment or settlement and the city would be responsible for 10%. On the other hand, in wage and hour claims, such as the uh, plaintiff's overtime uh, claim, the Municipal League offers no monetary coverage at all. All they offer is uh, cost of defense. On other types of claims for employment discrimination or retaliation, those types of things uh, that are employment rated, related, the League uh, generally it, it offers 50-50 coverage. So, um, there's some question about, you know, um, who would owe what, uh, depending on the outcome of, of the trial. For settlement purposes, the league has agreed to pay 50% of uh, any settlement uh, amount, uh, and the city would be responsible for the other 50%. Um, so that 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 is the issue with regard to coverage. Uh, Keith, could you also explain that the city said um, what what Mr. Hayes said about paying on the full claim and then the city paying the lead. Right. So um, the city of Helena, like many small cities in Arkansas, especially um, these days, is is having uh, financial problems. That's that's not unusual. Uh, Mark uh, will work with the city uh, to work out uh, a time payment uh, for any uh, contribution that the city would be required to make towards the settlement. Um, I, I don't think that Mark uh, stated to me any specific terms along that, but but I, I think in good faith he will uh, try to work something out so that this does not create a huge financial hard, hardship for the city. Thank you, Keith. And if any of you have any questions, I, I stand stand for your questions. Okay. Well, uh, then the plan is that I will convey that uh, to the plaintiff's attorney, uh, and then I will advise the mayor uh, and Andre of uh, uh, the response that we get. I have a question. Yes, sir. And I, I want to make sure I understand this correctly. If, if we settle for 25, or let's say if it's, if accept, it's accepted, if the offer of 25 is accepted and we pay, the city pays 50%, if the offer is not accepted, uh, I'm a little fuzzy on who pays if we go to trial. Um, it's possible that we pay the entire amount if there's a judgment in it. Well, it depends on the, the, the claim. Mm -hmm. uh, if if uh, it's a wage and hour claim, there is no coverage. Uh, so okay. if he were to win on the Arkansas Minimum Wage Act claim, and it, it's called Minimum Wage Act, but it encompasses the overtime claim, um, right. then th there's no coverage at all other than cost of defense. Um, so, but, but, you know, for, for settlement purposes, the league has agreed to pay 50%. Okay. And mm -hmm. so to be clear, uh, you know, if they accept the $25,000, then, then they, his attorney is going to make a claim for attorney's fees and costs. Uh, and so that that's going to have to be dealt with. Um, but considering, um, if we go to trial and, have done nothing to try to um, give ourselves a little insurance, then 
potentially we might be on the hook for um, even more. I just I was just trying to be sure on the uh, on the backside of it if, sure. uh, if there's a judgment. So we'll know in about 10 days whether or not they accept that. Right. That's that, that's right. Uh, the rule is that once it's conveyed, they have 10 days to make up their mind. If after 10 days they haven't done anything, then it's deemed uh, that they do not accept it. Uh, so most of the time that this happens, um, in fact, all the time that I've used this as a tool to get a case settled, it wound up being a settlement rather than a judgment um, because most of the time people aren't interested in having a piece of paper that says judgment. What they want is you know, green stuff. Uh, and so this is just a tool to get people to think seriously about uh, the case. Well, Mayor, if uh, if no one else has anything, then I will uh, I will take care of uh, conveying this uh, offer of judgment, and then I will be back in touch with you. Great. <clears throat> Make sure one more time. Uh, no other questions or Andre do you, or Mr. Valley. Do you have anything? Uh, basically, one thing that, that I have to say: he's not asking for permission to go forward because this is less than the sixty thousand that you all have previously authorized at the mediation. This is thirty-five thousand dollars less. So he's not asking for the council approval on that. We're just advising you in the professional uh, judgment that he's going forward with that. He wants to keep you informed as, as a client. Some of y'all are texting us if we needed to approve it, but he—he's just this is less than what you've already offered, Mr. Harvey. Yeah. All right. Makes sense. So. Um... Mr. Wren, thank you for your uh, excellent analysis and all your hard work on this case on our behalf. And uh, we appreciate your time tonight and we look forward to hearing back and seeing what happens next. All right, well, thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Council Members, and thank you, Andre. I will be back in touch. Well, have all a good right. night. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. And thank you, Mr. Valley. Um, the, the next, the actual first thing on our agenda that went out is a revised revised base pay ordinance for equipment operators. And um, Mr. Valley, I think that revised base pay ordinance, were you going to handle that? Uh, yes, I don't have a copy. I'm going to turn up a pair that you all discussed it last, uh, last council meeting. Sorry, getting the phone call. Y'all discussed it at the last council meeting. Uh, regarding Mr. Jones' request, and Mr. Jones had language regarding 13, 14, 15 on the hour and various expenses. Uh, I have not seen the ordinance myself, so I would ask Mr. Turner to explain what he typed in, into it, because he was going to do the language after talking to Mr. Jones. Mr. Turner, are you there? Yeah, I haven't talked to Mr. Jones about it, and so I haven't done anything with it. I know the last time we discussed it, you guys said that we needed to be have some clarification on how many years of experience and uh, all I've heard of is that they haven't come to any uh, clear understanding of what the experience requirements would be. If the experience requirements were before hire or with the rate of pay go up as a consequence of working for the city. So not, I haven't gotten any details on any of those uh, specifics the, la the, the last that we had was the you all voted that for the people already here that it would go in and affect immediately for them for raises and so forth but uh, you told us to address the base pay issue and I don't have any clarity for Mr. Jones the mayor Mr. Jones went back and forth in the last meeting uh, talking about the parameters and I actually need to review the minutes to see what exactly you all decided on that. They didn't decide, Mr. Valley. Oh, well, that's, that, that's, that answers my lack of clarity. Thank you, because Ms. Randall. Uh, Mr. Ms. Crockett and I had discussed that we were confused as to if we hire a new person, are we talking about his years of experience, zero to one, that, that he would start at 13, or if he's got five years experience, do we start him at 15? 
we didn't, it's not in the minutes as to what we do with that. Yeah, I think Ms. Ramsey clarifies it. I think the issue, and we, we did listen to the minutes or we listened to the meeting, I'm sorry. And it, we were talking about $13 starting pay, $14 after a year, $15 after two years. And to amend the base pay ordinance not tonight to show $13 starting pay. But the issue, as she pointed out, was do we give credit for experience when they are hired for that you know, two years or three years experience? Um, I don't recall Grant, you know, that that was what we were thinking. I think we were thinking 13 starting. Uh, but I, uh, go ahead, man. But, and that's how that's how it was in the audio of the meeting. So, but I think the issue is do we give 14, 15 based on experience when we hire them, or do we start everybody out at that 13? And what, was there an issue about $13.10 versus $13 even, maybe? But other than that, that's the issue as I understand it. Is, is that right? Yes. Well, yes. Um, oh, yes. As far as I understand it, I, I agree. I think that's the issue, but. Uh, we didn't have any, any further direction. I, and I know we've had a lot of, of equipment weather since then. And so uh, I think that, that it had to be defined because the base pay would be set in the, as you all are aware, but just for those who are not on the council and the administration, uh, it would set the, the base salary for a poor person coming in. So we would need that before we drafted the base pay. Uh, but as it relates to those who are already there, you'll discuss that in detail. and. And I don't know how that applies to each one of your employees, but you all voted that those things would take effect. Whatever you discuss in that meeting would take effect then uh, for existing employees. Okay. I guess so we still need needs direction to... over. Go, Go ahead, ahead Mia. No, Let's I was just going to say the same thing. The direction on the starting pay for the base pay ordinance. So anybody just chip in. Sandy Rams here. Uh, Mr. Jones pointed out during the discussion that if he found an operator that had, say, five years experience, there's no way that man would come here for $13 an hour. And uh, uh, that may be something to think about because he would probably need, if he's got that much previous experience, he may need to start at 15. I agree. Well, I agree. I this is at, um, trying to draw people here to the city to employ them. And that would be a low salary to start if you already had experience outside of the city. So I think it should, we should do something as far as previous experience is concerned. I agree with the mayor. I agree with that. Any other comments? Well, my understanding was that, as like Ms. Davis just said, I thought it did not depend on if the experience was with the city or not. I thought it was just if you had, if I worked for uh, Davis Construction and drove backhoe and all of that, and I came with five years of experience, I thought it was that we would start them out at 15. Well, that's the direction we're looking for. And I, I think that uh, you all did discuss, I think everybody agrees that it was not based on city experience with the city. It was based on overall experience for a CDL driver or the, the heavy equipment operator, whichever one it was. Uh, but the issue is what Mr. Turner and I needed was direction as to what's $13 an hour, what's $14 an hour, what's $15 an hour for the purpose of the base pay. And that's what we had discussed is that parameter wasn't completely defined for us to draft the uh, ordinance. That's all, all we were saying. Uh, but then I yield to anybody. I thought it was, and this is just me, zero to one was 13, um, two to two and three was 14, and three plus was 15. I'm, I might be wrong, but I think that's what I remember. Well, I mean, on the starting part of it, I, th I think 
What, what would y'all like to do on the start? I guess the other question is how do we document an, an income? We, of course, we could document the people here on payroll, but how about the new, new hires? How do we document that they have the experience that they say they have would be one question. I guess you could leave that up to us, but do y'all have any input or we could put that in writing, I guess, from an end order. Do y'all ch check the records if they've been employed somewhere else before coming, I, I mean, that's what we need a human resource person for, to call and check reference. If the person has been working for AAA Cooper for five years and want to get off the road and come back home, you, the human resource director or, or personnel person will call and say, hey, uh, John Henry worked for you all. And I'm trying to verify his employment. How long did he work for you all? And if that pans out, then you decide. You go from there because if somebody come in and say, oh, I work for uh, John Wayne Construction and I drove a backhoe, but you know that you can't call John Wayne Construction to verify that. So you got to be able to verify before you give them that kind of money. You got to verify employment and uh, years of experience because what if they only worked six months and told you on the application they lied and said they worked in five years? So that's what, that's when the human resource person comes in or, or, or however you all want to do it, but you want to make sure you uh, validate their claim. If, if, if they're saying they work for that construction company or AAA Cooper or Tyson, you want to make sure that you better have a door that you can call Tyson and verify that. They said they said, oh, they they said it, but it's up. I mean, if they say they work for, them, we should be able to. Uh, they should be able to show proof, and we should verify that that that's what they have done before we get that kind of money away. That's true. I agree. Uh, it's possible to have. Uh, what well, we would have with or without experience, I mean, as far as the salary range. Well, Ms. Croggett, I think was pointing out, I kind of remember it this way, zero to one. And well, we listened to it also, but zero to one was 13. So I guess really starting with no experience, 13. Uh, I think on listening to it, it was one year, 14, two years, 15, but it could have been two to three years, 15. Uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, Joe St. Columbia, I agree with uh, Mr. Franklin. I, I think we need to verify it. And of course, if the gentleman that we're going to employ lied on, on the application, I think we need to uh, not hire the gentleman. So we don't want a bunch of people trying to lie to us about their wages. Well, why don't we leave it? Well, unless there's anybody else that wants to chime in, and you can still chime in, but we can just leave it that verification will be requested via documentation uh, by the applicant for anything more yeah. than a year, anything more than a year's experience as a heavy heavy equipment operator. Um, it shouldn't be too much for someone who's done it, I would think, or other verification is determined at the time in case for some reason we can't foresee they couldn't get documentation, I guess. Is, how does that sound? Mr. Valley, how does that sound? Or Ms. Ramsey? Uh, that's uh, I, I, I think it's an administrative issue to verify it anyway. I, I think the most frankly was like Columbia, uh, correct. Uh, the, the simply once we put the language in there, it'd be up to the, the administration to verify uh, through the mayor's office, or through HR, or or through or through all three with, with the Department of Public Works uh, to verify that the person that the applicant is being truthful. So, does it, let me put it another way: Is there any objection to drafting the base pay ordinance along those lines of? Uh, starting at zero to one year, $13 an hour, two years, $14 an hour, three to four. We want to say three or four because I mean, it could be. Why don't you, with the, with the, with the one year, why don't you check with the market before you do that? Because see, think about it. If you got a CDL driver that's going to get out of school, what, since you got such a good relationship with PC College, why don't you check with them? to see what, what, what their starting pay would, what after getting out of school so you can figure out how much would you pay those people 
with the with with, with heavy equipment operators, CDS, or whatever. You have a relationship with the college and get the college involved in this so you can determine, okay, this is what the college offer. They have that class. It's a fair uh, a fair market price. We can't compete with Memphis or South Haven, but let's see what a, what a person gets. Talk to the college uh, and see what, I mean, what's the going rate. So you know, I mean, do you go down a dollar? Do you go up a dollar? Do you go fifty cents? How would how would you give, you give yourself some wiggle room with this before you just finalize it? Talk to some people. I'm pretty sure that you you, you know people, uh, mayor, that you can talk to and bring us back some information. Uh, like Mr. Valley said, it's it's an administrative issue. So why don't you all figure the number out and then we can say yeah or nay to it. Go back to start. Go back to the starting board. And just talk to somebody at the college because they have these type of um, programs. They got the CDL drivers, and you know, check with Mariana, check with Four City, check with Marvel, check with the surrounding area, and see what's the going rate. So that maybe if these people know that you're gonna get fourteen or thirteen dollars, or whatever, twelve dollars starting out, whatever, they can say, hey, what hell is offering this? Let's just see. Why don't you go back and see what you can find out? They report back to us so we can say, okay, man, that, that sounds pretty reasonable. Uh, Mr. Well, Franklin, I got a practical we, question. Are you asking for for us to draft the ordinance based on what he finds, and then he can discuss it at the next meeting? Of how you practically want to do that? Are you asking? For yeah, two yeah, meetings? Yes, well, because the practical thing that I see is he's going to come back another meeting and report back to you, all, then we have to wait another time to draft the ordinance. I'm just asking the practicability of how you want to do it. Do you want us to just do you want the mayor get the numbers, we put it in, and then we, he presents that to you all? Yeah, yeah, he can do that. I mean, you know, we everybody got an email. I think it's a Miss Crockett. I mean, I'll be happy to, to deliver her package to make sure that we get it on, on time to make sure that we could be the, the, the fastest he want to expect is it's up to him. He can do it tomorrow. He can do it whenever he so chooses, as long as we get to see what the what the going market is before we, I mean, what, what if you shoot yourself in the foot and give more? What if you shoot yourself in the foot and give less? By the college having this kind of program, he should be able to network with the college and see when they get out of school, what is the offering rate? And we can decide from, from there. Instead of try, uh, instead of us brainstorming, trying to figure it out, this is an administrative issue, right? So the, let the mayor talk to the college or people in his inner circle to figure out, hey, can they go and do some re reporting on this and come back and report to the council? Or he can email us and say, hey, this is what I found and I think we should go here. But sh show us some black and white. Show us some paper proof. This is what is going. So when people come to us about the salary, we can say, well, the mayor went out and looked at this entity. And they said, this is what the start rate is. And this is what Forest City or Mariana, Hughes, Elaine, what they're going. And this is what we're going to try to be competitive with those surrounding areas. So we can be like, okay, this is what ha this is what the mayor got. Do we go up a dollar, down a dollar, or we right in between so that we can get qualified workers? Uh, I'd like to. I'd like to also add to that. Of course, fresh out of college, they wouldn't have any experience at all, so they would be getting the minimum, whatever we said at that time. That makes sense. Okay. Well, we will check. Well, is there are there any other comments from anybody else? Why we move on? And and Miss Saint Clem, you're absolutely correct. They'll be fresh out of school, but. If they're gonna come with us, at least the mayor can decide, mayor, or, or and say, well, hey, I feel like since they're fresh out of college, if they, if, if you know, you can look at, you know, an incentive you give them, you know, if they, if they do a year or they do, uh, the after ninety day probation period, you have to give some kind of incentive. Say, well, we appreciate you coming, or at least if they, whatever it is, give some kind of incentive for working for us. If it's a a a, a fifty dollar signing bond, whatever it is, uh, try to make sure we can get those people here. So is it, is Andre Valley for the record, is, is, is it a consistence of the council that once the mayor gets these numbers and we draft the base paper, just send it to you all uh, you, for the next council meeting? That's fine, that's fine me, Mr. Valley. And even though, what, what I, before I said that, Mr. Valley, but department heads should also be able to verify employment with the people, in the, uh, the department heads, Check your department heads because see, that's another thing. If department heads are checking uh, credentials, then it, the mayor, you shouldn't have to do that. Make sure your department heads 
are aware of that, and they go out and they they talk to because they you you just uh, well, I just think the department head is gonna be overseeing that person day to day operation. The department head should be able to I'm talk stop to trying somebody. To listen, I, I yeah. need something. That, that's correct. Department heads have a lot of input into this. And for example, we're trying to replace Roy, or we have been, and you know, going through this, uh, you know, as we speak. So. Uh, okay, any other comments before we move on? And we'll go um, talk to the department heads and others and report back. Okay. All right, if there's nothing else, then we'll, we'll move on to the next one uh, on the agenda that was uh, sent out by Ms. Ramsey. And that is the update on the crime committee. Mr. Etherly, are you... Are you you're recognized. So, um, yeah, um, I had intended to uh, try to get everybody to meet this week and based on the forecast and what's been going on, I kind of I delayed that. And it seems like that was a pretty good decision at this point. Uh, what I'm going to try to do is see if we can all meet on Monday. Um, and so I'm going to try to contact everybody. And I want to remind the council that um, the council should, is, is welcome and invited to be a part of this. I'll get you out some kind of uh, email or notice after I talk to everybody uh, in the next 24 hours or so and let you know, but we'll try to do something on Monday. And I needed to ask a question also. Uh, does this meeting need to be recorded? Is this one that we'll have to record also? And I wasn't sure about that. And if so, then Ms. Halbert, I will get with you and uh, confirm the time and start the start time. Um, Mr. Ethley, if, if uh... Uh, any other committee members is your is your committee with private citizens though right yes and so it, it wouldn't be a city council meeting you're just having a, a, a meeting for yourself but if council members are you inviting them to be there you've got to record it because it becomes a meeting if any other council members there and you are talking about city business so yes it would have to be recorded well i'm inviting and anticipating and hoping that everybody uh takes part so yes we, uh, we'll need a record uh, uh, is it a law that if two or more members are together that uh, constitutes a meeting? And it would right. yeah. be yes, sir. If they're discussing city business at, at all, it constitutes a meeting. Be recorded. Yes, sir. So under the new FOI uh, laws from last year, it would have to be recorded. Okay. okay. Any other questions of Mr. Edley uh, or Mr. Valley? or comments about the crime committee. Okay, thank you, Mr. Everly. So Monday, uh, and um, we'll, we'll work with you on the other logistical issues there as well. Um, the next item on the agenda is the landfill bond renewal. I don't have, I not believe it was emailed out. Ms. Ramsey, if you don't mind, I'm gonna call on you about that, do you mind? Yeah, we got no, uh, Mr. Valley understands the bond issue. Uh, each year in March, the latter part of March, we have to get a surety bond on the landfill. Uh, we used this company last year and the year previous, the premiums are within range that they were last year. One premium is 5588 for 186250 Then second premium is 46262 for $1,542,77. We have to prove we have this bond not only to ADEQ, but to Bank of the Ozarks. We don't have to pay it until March 24th, but I hope to get it approved sooner so that I could get it off when the landfill account had money. So the question yes. is not, Mr. Valley. Yes, yeah, so this is something that's mandatory, not just with uh, it's mandatory for keeping the bond and mandatory also uh, for for ADQ. Uh, years ago, they used to make us post all cash when consolidated cities. We had to come up with a million, one point eight million dollars in cash uh, as part of the initial bond. But since then, they've allowed us to just do surety bonds with it's paying annual, annual premiums, which is far cheaper than having the actual cash. If we don't do this, then we've got to come up with actual cash 
to make sure that the bond, the purpose of the bond is po clo closure and post closure uh, is to ensure that there's sufficient monies there to make sure that if land is shut down for any reason, that there, it would not become a, a, a site where the federal government through the EPA or the state through Arkansas Department of the Call had to come in and use what would be super fund funds to clean up a, a hazardous site. And so that's that's the general purpose of it, but it's something that we need to approve and I suggest you approve whichever one Ms. Ramsey or Mr. Mr. Mayor or Mr. Turner says is best. Mr. Valley, we have to do both of these. They're two small bonds. Okay, yes ma'am. It'd, it'd be like a total of like 51,000 roughly. Uh, my question is, are these premium rates of uh, 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 what they were last year, the same rates? Yes, sir. Just a few hundred dollars difference. Okay. I move we move forward on uh, the uh, issuing of these bonds and that we uh, move forward with this. I make the motion. Mr. St. Columbia makes the motion that we approve. Um, the, the landfill bond renewals that were emailed out uh, by Ms. Ramsey uh, for this year, uh, for the coming year for the for the uh, Helena West Helena Phillips County landfill. Is there a second? Second. I think Ms. Davis seconded the motion. Are there any questions or further discussion about the motion? If not, call the roll. Crockett? Yes. Etherly? Yes. Forward? Franklin? Yes. Davis? Yes. St. Columbia? Yes. Forward? Five yes. Motion passes. Uh, thank you very much. The uh, next item of business on the agenda is an invoice uh, regarding a lift truck at the landfill for $12,697.56. Um, and this is, this was an uh, invoice. Ms. Ramsey, did, is this the one that talked about getting us out of the um, I don't, and I don't know, if I was just texting to see if uh, anybody was on who could address this more, but I could not write this check. It was over my spending limit. Uh, I could be mistaken. I don't remember that we approved it or pre-approved it. Um, and, and to be honest, uh, it'd be better to have one of our department heads on to, uh, to discuss it further if you have any significant questions about it. Ms. Ms. Ramsey, do you want to add anything to that? Uh, no, that's the one on the excavator that we had to pull out and then they had to work on it. So Mr. would you Turner, like to... Do you have any questions? I mean, do you have anything you want to add? That? I mean, yeah, not, I don't mean to put you on the spot. I just want to make sure if you do. No, that's anything. just... No, it's just the excavator um, that we had to get the big truck to pull it out of the mud, and then the lift truck people came down and repaired it. I don't, I don't recall being. Um, I think this was an after-the-fact invoice that went over my spending limit and um, well over it, and so it needed to be approved and. Um, so would you like to wait until you get your department head on the, on the call or we can table to the next meeting so when your department head can better explain since you, uh, you, not, you, you don't know, um, you want to wait till well, you know, get them? I know it was, it was uh, over my spending limit, which is why I guess we put it on the agenda because I said we had to get it approved because I didn't recall approving it. Okay. And I didn't feel comfortable signing the check. Um, so yeah, okay. I, I'd feel more comfortable if we had uh, 
you can if you want you, you can just somebody he could he could more specifically address it so well we can take we'll, it to the we'll next meeting that. we'll move that to the next meeting there, but it hasn't no the money already been spent well i didn't sign the check so i guess no, not. Yeah, but it but the, the work has been done yes, yes ma'am. So I don't see the purpose of tabling because we're gonna to have to pay the bill anyway. But I go with whatever y'all say. Well, I don't, I don't well, mind well, tabling it if it helps answer questions. Which well, well Miss Miss Cracker, I don't have. I don't want to. I don't want to pretend to have an answer if I don't have answers. I'd rather have somebody who who uh, was there at the time, frankly, rather than trying well, to wing it. But. Well, Ms. Um, but that's why it's on the agenda. It's over my spending limit, and I didn't, I didn't sign it. This, well, work, been, this work has been done. Uh, well, I, uh, you still have to wait competitive bidding, so you need to bring it back in the house. Uh, I'm not at City Hall, so I can't draft the ordinance tonight. All my city emails go to my city computer that's at City Hall. I try to keep my my stuff separate, so I couldn't draft the ordinance tonight for you related to that anyhow. Uh, but the, you're going to have an ordinance waiting for competitive bidding because it's above $7,500 anyhow. That's a good point. I think I just, uh, it's obviously been a pretty busy couple of weeks. And I know at one point I said that, uh, I said that I couldn't sign it and I wasn't aware of it being approved. So I didn't, if we needed to put it on the agenda, but I hadn't, I hadn't come prepared for it. Uh, or to make sure somebody was here. So my apologies for that. And May I have just, one, practical, one practical question I have. Could you give us the age of this? How long ago was this? I don't think it was that long ago. Um, okay. Maybe in the last 60 days, Ms. Ramsey, something like that. 30 to 60. I, I was just asking for purpose of payment so we wouldn't get sued or anything it, like that. That's, that's all I, I It might have even been in the last 30 days. It's fairly recent. Yeah, the invoice is dated January 29th. The work was done the 26th. That's not right. So, um, if, there, if there is anybody, I can't see everybody without taking some time to swap through here, but if anybody is here who, uh, who can answer any more questions about it or discuss it, go ahead and speak up. So I think anyway, Mr. Valley's right. We'd have to waive competitive bidding. So that means we'd have to put it on the next meeting anyway. So uh, let's just make sure Ms. Ramsey, we get it on the next agenda and, and I'll try to make sure we're better prepared and have the, the ordinance uh, get with Mr. Valley uh, to get that competitive bidding waived and uh, also to be able to answer questions about it. And I think if we pay it quickly thereafter, I, I think we'll still be okay. 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 Uh, if there aren't any other questions or comments about that, we're going to move on and come back with a bidding uh, ordinance and uh, also somebody can answer more questions about it. Uh, the last two things, Ms. Ramsey, I have on the agenda. And again, uh, my apologies for uh, we're not as prepared as we usually are because of all the weather conditions we've had. But we had uh, minutes on there, and I don't believe we have a treasurer's report. And I'm not sure we have minutes because I just signed a bunch of them, and I haven't seen you since all the snow. So I don't know that you have the minutes to put <laughs> to send them out. But but that's what we have on there, Ms. Ramsey. Do, you, do we have any minutes? Yes, sir. We have several sets of minutes. Uh, some of them are actual meetings. Some are just workshops. That's why we have why I sent out so many. And since Mr. Valley says a workshop is like a meeting, I thought we'd go ahead and approve everything, if you don't mind. Would you go through those? Because I don't have those in front of me. I have uh, I have in front of me a workshop meeting January the 12th. Uh, yes. I'm in motion that we approve that meeting, uh, minutes of that meeting. Okay, there's a motion uh, by Mr. Mr. St. Clemmie that we adopt the minutes from, it's a workshop. Yes, yeah, so January 12th. 
January the 12th. Is there a second? Second. Ms. Davis second the motion. Any other discussion or questions about the motion? If not, call the roll. St. Columbia? Yes. Crockett? Yes. Forward? Davis? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Etherly? Yes. Five, yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Um, Net, is there what's the next set, Mr. Mayor? I also have a me a virtual workshop meeting held on January the 19th. I move that uh minutes of that meeting be approved. St. Clay moves adoption of the minutes from the workshop of January 19th. Is there a second? Second, Ms. David seconds the motion. Any other? Discussion or questions about the motion? If not, call the roll. Crockett? St. Columbia? Yes. Etherly? Yes. Ford? Franklin? Yes. Davis? Yes. Crockett? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes. yes, yes, yes. All right, thank you. I had five yes. Christian passes, thank you. Is there another set? Yes, sir. Council meeting February 1st, where you pass the budget. That's all we, it's on. We got, we've got a, a, a council meeting January 21st. Oh, do we? Okay, I'm sorry. I'll make a motion that we approve those minutes. As written. Mr. St. Columbia moves that we adopt the minutes from January 21st City Council meeting as written and sent out by Ms. Ramsey. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Edler seconds the motion. Any other questions or comments about the motion? If not, call the roll. Okay, everyone was there except. Uh, Ms. Davis and Ms. Ford, so that will be um, Etherly. Yes. St. Columbia. Yes. Franklin. Yes. Crockett. Yes. And Ford and Davis were absent at that meeting. Okay, I have okay. another. I have another council meeting February the first. Uh, as a virtual meeting. The only thing that we did there was pass the budget and right. everyone was present. And on February 1st, I'll make a motion that we approve those minutes. Mr. St. Columbia moves that we adopt the minutes of February 1st um, as written and submitted. Um, uh, Ms. Ramsey, is there a second? Second. Is that who is that? I'm sorry, Mr. Etherly. Yes, I need okay. that, that was me. Okay, Mr. Mr. Etherly seconds the motion. Any other questions or comments about the motion? If not, call the roll. David, yes, forward, yes, Franklin, yes, Etherly, yes, St. Columbia, yes. Rocket? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. St. Columbia, if you'll let me do this one. The next meeting is February the 2nd. Right. It has the motion in there dealing with the landfill and the amount of starting pay. Uh, could we wait and do that until uh, the we do the base pay ordinance at the next meeting showing that it's for the number of years worked or whatever after you do your survey? Absolutely. Okay, I'll just move that one to the next agenda then. Yeah, maybe the last one. Yes, sir. Okay, are we caught up otherwise? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It cleans it all up. 
Okay, the last item on the agenda is a treasurer's report, but I think Mr. Turner and I spoke earlier and with the weather conditions, but Mr. Turner, you're recognized anyway. Yeah, uh, I had most of the information, but I didn't get a chance to put the um, budget information into the report, into the accounting system. So it's not gonna include that. So I just wanted to get that to you later once I included the uh, budget into the accounting software. And so I just didn't get a chance to do it the last couple of days. Okay, thank you, Mr. Turner. Um, I have a... Yes, go ahead. Uh, I have a question. Uh, we When we were looking at the budget, Mr. Turner, I noticed yes, that... Um, we had uh, some money in the budget for, uh, let me get my paperwork. I saw $90,000 for the water department, uh, cell phone, uh, uh, telephone system. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I, we had $90,000 for, for the water department's phone systems, phone service. Then we had, um, I see we got $50,000 in donations. Uh, let me get it together. Okay, take my questions. Uh, we, on page four of the budget, we got $25,000 for animal shelters. On page four, we got $35,000, I mean, $30,000 for donations. Then we got $47,000 for supplies, then another $12,000. And then um, are we, uh, with the Corps of Engineers, do we are we gonna pay that fifty thousand dollars to the port Corps of Engineers? Then I think we got. 50. No, I'm sorry. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm just gonna give you all what I saw. Uh, I've been going. I'm not through with it, but that was a, a, the uh, professional services. We got a, another for computer service, um, Mayor. I'm trying to see how do we get seventy two thousand dollars for computer services. And then we got uh, another professional services on page 18 for $62,000. And uh, I'm just looking, we got in the budget, I, I know we were trying to pass a budget to uh, make sure we can stay open, but I encourage the council members to, 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 if they would help me with this, we need to start going through this budget to look at some things because uh, for the animal shelter, I see that we got $25,000 for that. And then we have a, the code enforcement, who is the animal the animal person. Uh, so are we going to keep the code enforcement as the animal person and also pay the animal shelter $25,000? And there's $30,000 in donations. Mr. St. Columbia uh, and I and more major, majority of these council members here, we did, I thought we were giving donations because we cut off the churches and we have not paid the Boys and Girls Club the uh, $12,000 a month we were supposed to pay them because that's why they got the army back over there. And this, uh, I just talking about the miscellaneous uh, for the one for 50, I think I think that's the core of it is, but the 66,000 and then for this professional service, the IT services and on the page 18 for the 62 and the water department, the, and then parks and rent, that's another thing. We don't have a parks and recreation, so what we need with $36,000 for playground equipment. Uh, I'm just going through everything from now on when it comes to this budget because I want to make sure that, that we, we passed it. And, uh, you know, things are sometimes put in the budget. And, and we have, we, and by the city council being over finances, I want to make sure that we are aware of it. I tr uh, I've tried to reach out to other councilors to see if they were aware of it. But with this playground equipment, uh, we need to, uh, for parks and rent. We don't have that department. And uh, then another thing, we're still paying uh, the bills over at the Armory in Helena. Uh, Mr. Turner, this don't have anything to do with you, but Mayor, have we entered into a contract with somebody? Have you entered into a contract with somebody about the Army over in, in Helena? Because uh, it is some activity going on over there. And I remember you said you was going to get back with us when, when you had a chance to write a lease agreement. Uh, we have not got that lease agreement back, but I'm, I have, I'm aware that something is going on over there, but I'm sorry to draft off, uh, drift off of there, but that's the thing about that as well. But Mr. Turner, these things, animal shelter, donation on page four, $30,000, 
and 47,000 dollars in supplies, and then another 12, uh, 12 12,000 for office supplies again is the uh, Port Authority and the, court, uh, the Port Authority 66,000 for expenses and uh, Corps of Engineers and this professional service of IT, uh, then the 62 for another professional service and the Water Department and uh, Parks and Recreation. That was what I found last night. I called some uh, some people last night late and I'm sorry, but those were my questions, Mr. Turner. Did you did you just want me to kind of uh, look into those things or, or kind of answer them? I, some of them I can because I don't have the budget in front of me. I, you know, I was I didn't get I haven't had a chance to get down to the office the last okay. couple of days. But what uh, there are a couple of things I can kind of answer. Uh, the twenty five thousand dollars on the animal shelter were just projected revenues. If we ever got an animal shelter up and running, those were just a projection of possible fees that we would get for whatever services we were providing, um, licensing fees or uh, other little things that whatever the city may charge for fines, whatever, anything else, things like that. So that's what the $25,000 in revenue was for. That was just an estimate of okay. possible revenues that we may uh, receive if we did open up the shelter. Uh, the $30,000 uh, and donations, those aren't donations to someone. Those are donations from someone. Uh, typically, okay. when I, if I have, uh, if we we can't donate anything, but those would be contributions. But take, legally, we can't, city can't uh, donate the funds. So those $30,000 are the, 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 the donations from the Port Authority for the salaries for the police chief okay. and the um, uh, fire chief. Uh, well, another thing... And and let, me, let me ask this one right quick uh, about the, you said parks and recreation. I'm sure the, the page that you stated was so, it was far back. So I'm thinking that was in tourism. I'm not necessarily sure if it said uh, playground equipment on the budget, but if it's in parks and recreation, uh, tourism usually contributes money to the swimming pool and they pay water, the water bill for the swimming pool and the, and the electricity uh, on the pumps and for the concession stands and things like that. So um, we may not, I have to actually, I don't have my hands on the budget right now to actually look at what you're looking at, but those are a lot of other um, expenses that are associated with operating a swimming pool. And since you said, I think you said page 18 or whatever, that would probably be uh, tourism and they contribute to, to the expenses for running the swimming pool. Uh, some of the other things I just have to look at. If there's anything particular, I may be able to tell you, but like I said, I don't have the budget in front of me right now. But those those okay. are just a couple of things that I could answer just right off the top of my head. Okay. So so with this um, animal shunting, so can we, I mean, because we're, we're it, it hadn't been brought to my attention. Anybody else on the council, the mayor hadn't made any mention about um, an animal shelter. So I, I mean, you know, if we're trying to save money, I think we 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 don't even have nobody uh, that I know of catching dogs besides the animal shelter. But um, okay, on yes, page, uh, Mr. Franklin, Mr. Franklin, can I add that, that now that was just uh, something that was planned. We were hoping to, and so the expenses that you see in the budget associated with the animal shelter would are just expenses that we uh, thought may be incurred uh, just starting it out. And uh, some of the, uh, the revenue that you see is just what we project if we did have an, an animal shelter. So that was kind of wishful thinking on both parts. Okay. Uh, then I, I was looking at, right, we have a lot of, uh, on page 15, that there's a lot of uh, prof you know, professional services. Uh, and, and I was kind of wanting to, Talk about that as well. We have a you lot say, of on page fifteen. Uh, yes, what, what what's at the top? What fund is that at the top of the page? And it's gonna be at the uh, street fund. Street so, fund. Uh, yes, I sir. couldn't. So, yeah, I'll have to kind of look at my spreadsheet and tell you exactly well, what. Because I do have I take notes when I'm preparing the budget, so um, there are notes that I have that tells me exactly what I was looking at. I mean, why I projected that amount, and so like okay. I said, right now I just don't have it in front of me right now. 
and then I, 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 I'm, you know, just, just looking, uh, like right here at the landfill, right here, we, we got this called Professional Services Management and Consulting for sixty two thousand dollars. Yeah, that's that's field and fields and yeah. associate. Those yeah. are those. That's the engineer, the landfill engineer. Yeah, I mean, I, I, that's what that's why I, I I got beside that, and then I see um, uh, something else. Okay, because in, in a lot in a lot of this, I've been going through looking at like you have. We have a lot of uh, computer website expenses. Do you have? Like right here on uh, this is gonna be tourism. You got right here miscellaneous and other. It's gonna be nineteen thousand five hundred dollars. Yes, yeah, so, some of those things. Now that may be uh, the tourism spends some money on the the Christmas trees and Christmas decorations. Most of that, when you see things like that, I'm I'm pretty sure that that's what that is. Other uh, the expenses associated with uh, uh, the holiday season. Yes, sir. Uh, Christmas and New Year. I see where it has a uh, decent, uh, yeah, then I see where you have uh, other professional service for $20,000. $20, That's under the tourism as well. I see $20,000 for professional services. Um, I see contracted, well, okay. Wow, oh, playground equipment, $18,000. Is that what it says? Playground equipment. Yes, yeah, su supplies, playground equipment, eighteen thousand dollars. Okay, that may have been in an old budget. I have to look at that, and I can look into it for you. you know. Okay. And, like I said, I just uh, can't remember off the top of my head. They, they, uh, they got uh, miscellaneous expenses. I see where it says pledge, ten thousand dollars. But those are some of the items that some of the events and festivals and other things that the, the tourism. Often pledges money to help different events, okay. uh, and so I'm sure that that's what that is. But like I said, it, it's not right in front of me, but I'm pretty sure that that's what that is. Some pledges that the uh, tourism commission makes uh, for for various festivals throughout the year. Okay, uh, and then I see, you know, like I said, it's a lot of professional services in each 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 department, which. Um, like one that stood, stood out to me, I see the bond for this, the land field. And I see a uh, transfer out, transfer in, in the balance field. And right here, again, professional services. Uh, professional services, we have a lot of those. And, and this is cheaper, but it's 29 Twenty nine dollars. What for? That's for the uh, street department. That's for professional services. I see the bond issue. Well, some of that, a lot of that. Uh, uh, no, 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 Mister Turn. Twenty nine hundred. Oh, okay. And then uh, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a lot of like okay, it's a lot like right here. It's a lot of things that. See, even though we passed the budget, I do, I kind of wish, now I, I, what I would like to see, that we start going back each month uh, to look at this budget, to keep this budget in line, to look at different things, because it's a lot, like the mayor had said earlier, that, you know, something when, uh, it was like, the, I think something from the landfill about it was over his spending authority. But in the past, they had, I know we have not approved a lot of things that the mayor has went over his spending authority. We have not approved. Am I right about that? And it's still lingering after the, the city council has not approved so spending that he has done. Uh, no, over his spending. no, you're not, you're not, you're not correct about that. I'm not going to let you finish that sentence. That's why we have auditors. Uh, auditors, yes, mayor, you, mayor, listen, I, I'm, I'm tired of doing that. Right now, mayor. Remaining, we, we, allegations are But I got the. We have legislative auditors who come out. I was talking. No, you, you don't have to. But I have enough. Mr. Auditors, you're out of this order. This is the treasury report. Franklin. I'm not out of order. That's all, that's what you all the time. Every order. time I get to get on stuff, there is, there is right now, there is things that you have done in the past that we have not approved. You're spending. And I, and, I, and, I, and I stand corrected. There are things that you have done that we have not approved. Mr. Valley has been, am I correct, Mr. Valley? It's things that, that he wanted to do a cleanup budget that we did not approve his spending. Am I right, Mr. Valley? 
I don't know the specific details, Mr. Franklin. Uh, I'd have to defer to Mr. Turner on all that, but your budget says that the mayor is supposed to, his spending cap is $5,000 or bidding is $7,500. And right. uh, you cannot engage in serial contracts. That's what your, that's what your ordinance says. Right. Uh, I don't know if the specific incidents that I would have to defer to Mr. Turner on that. Uh, for any, anything like that, but it's, the, the ordinance is pretty clear. The serial contract is if you divide it up into other portions. Uh, but uh, I don't know of any specific incident. But of course, I'm not the mayor, the council, or or uh, or well, okay. the treasurer or city clerk. Well, right. Well, I can, I can refresh. I mean, I don't mean to get off. I can refresh. Remember that not this not this past year, but the year the the first year and the second year, or well, the first year that the mayor had to spend over his spend limit, and we. Y'all kept saying we do a cleanup budget, and we refused to do it because he had he had spent some money over his spending limit, and we did not approve it. So remember, you always asked, "Could we get a, to clean up the budget, clean up the things the mayor had spent?" And we didn't give it. I remember that. I, I remember that clearly, Mr. Turner. Do you remember that they was asking us to clear up something? A lot of things the mayor had went over his spending limit. I, matter of fact, one of them is that over the, that Beachwood apartment where those streets were, were, were done without council approval and the mayor wanted to be paid. And I think we held off on that and some more things he had did over his spending limit. Uh, well, Mr. Frank, you're, you're I'm not exactly... About... Go ahead. I'm not exactly sure about anything in particular. I, I know me and Ms. Ramsey, we always, when we see a check coming through, this old $5,000, we go, we go look at the minutes and we go back and look. Well, well, and I understand. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, but what I'm saying is that I don't know of anything in particular. And I think you may be uh, getting two things conflated. It's like going over his spending limit is one thing. He has a $5,000 spending limit. But the things I was mostly concerned with with you guys in the budget was appropriations. So we may have uh, spent over appropriations. You may have appropriated uh, $30,000 for supplies and we went and we spent $35,000. So I was trying to get the appropriations. Uh, in least, line, but not not necessarily, you. but not necessarily a spending limit. So that that's why I just want to make a clarification between okay. those two things. And, and, and I, but I'm, I'm I'm not the only one, and I'm pretty sure I'm I'm gonna go back and look. But I know that the mayor had over spent over his limit and came back to the, and said, you know, we need to pay this, and we said no. I'm not I'm because me and Miss Crockett had some issues with it, and we didn't do it because it, we said we need to clean this up before the the next the next audit or whatever. And we didn't do it, so I, I, I'll find okay. out. Because I, Franklin, but, but, I, but I'm gonna you're, get back you're to the treasure report, Mr. Franklin. You're filibustering the meeting. You're making allegations. Yeah, man, I'm about to make allegations. Right right let me finish no, talking. No, I get tired every time. Do you think talking, you can just? You don't, don't you don't run, run this. One, I'm not trying to remember. run anything. It's a treasure report, and I have the floor. It's a Dang, every time I get to talk, it. every time I yeah. get to talk, you got to yeah. say something. My goodness, the, let me finish. My goodness. I'm not taking nothing. Order. Not taking You're nothing. out of order. You out of order. Every yeah. time I get to say something, you get to, you get to just yapping. I'm still talking. I'm talking to Mr. Turner. Yes. I'm talking to Mr. Turner. I don't want to hear that foolishness. I'm talking to Mr. Turner. Mr. Turner, Mr. Turner can you can we, can we still ask about this seventy two thousand dollars in IT services? So can we ask those questions about the IT service for seventy two thousand dollars, Mr. Turner? Can we ask, can we ask the, can you answer the question about the seventy two thousand dollars in professional service? Can you answer the question about the seventy two thousand dollars, Mr. Turner? Yeah, I'll answer some, I of some, clear, some clear time to speak. I don't want to talk over anybody, so. Thank you. Ms. Franklin? The $72,000, Mr. Turner. This you you are not the entire council. You're out of order, and, and I'm... I don't want to hear that shit you're talking about. Mr. You, Turner, the $72,000, Mr. Turner. The $72,000 in professional services. Because we had a contract for seventy two thousand dollars, I think that was Mr. Thin with that a contract with with a with the seventy two thousand dollars, seventy two thousand dollars. Mr. Turner, can you tell us that's in professional services, Mr. Mr. Franklin? I have to actually look at the budget to see exactly what it is. Uh, okay. I know we had uh, we have a month to month uh, country, uh, month to month agreement with our IT provider, and I'm sure that that's in there. Uh, but it may be other things that are that are in there. So I would have, like I said, I would have to look at my uh, spreadsheet 
And like I said, I have all those notes in my in the spreadsheet that I have to it. But I, yeah, okay. I, I don't have it in front of me right now, so I couldn't tell you exactly what it is. Right well, yes, sir. well can, can you tell Mr. Turner with the perfect, who's the IT service? The, the, the council has, has never approved the IT service for $72,000. Well, I mean, I'm not saying that that's what we well, don't have I mean, a saying, contract with anybody that says we paid them $72,000 a year. If, if it's an estimate uh, based on the, the, the month-to-month fee or whatever, I'm just trying to estimate how much it may be. And like I said, that may not all of it not even be with that particular entity, that particular vendor. So uh, without me looking at the, you know, looking at my spreadsheet and looking at the information, I couldn't tell you if that was one person or two or three vendors. It sounds like I'm breaking up a little bit too. So, sounds like I'm breaking up a little bit. So. Okay, I'm going to bring this meeting back to order. If you can hear me, even in a regular meeting, let alone on Zoom, there is something called the legislative audit. Their job is to audit what we do. You don't have to take my word for it. You don't have to take anybody's word for it. You can go onto our website and you can read the legislative audit report for fiscal year 2019. And there is no report. One of the things they look at is whether or not I've spent over my spending limit or broken the state rules or our own codes regarding spending limits or uh, having our uh, items bid. You will see in that audit report. No such finding in 2019. That's the only one that's been completed so far since I've been mayor, and it's on our website, full transparency. Anybody's welcome to go read it, and you will see there is nothing in there about those projects about Beach Street, and the reason is because they were approved and or under the $5,000 spending limit, as well as the other two. So... It's, it's transparency, it's on our website. Anybody can see it. Um, so I'm told you can't hear me. So uh, that's just as well. I'm trying to figure out the message all of you, but the bottom line is the other city website, hwh.ar.gov, and you will be able to see the audit. In that audit, But man, what I was trying to tell Mr. Turner is that the IT service is a serial contract. You, you, you st- you, the IT service is a serial contract that did not be was not approved by this body. That's the same thing. That's that's what I'm talking about, and I'm pretty sure the city council remembers that you would got IT in the box. We did not approve that. That's a serial contract. You've been using IT in the box since uh, Crystal Clear Solutions since you terminate that contract. So when you say this false allegation, remember, we did not approve that. You've been studying, spending that money. So don't get mad. So you can't, um, you tried to mute me, but I'm still here. So, cause you know, you don't want me to tell the truth on all the stuff that you're doing. So you can mute me if you want. I was, I'm going to still tell you that you are doing this uh, serial contract. You're spending money that you have not been authorized to spend. And when somebody calls you to the carpet, you want to get loud and holler and cry like a, a child. But it's the truth. You have been spending this money without council approval. Just like you bought those trucks for the, the one coded form that you weren't supposed to buy for, but you want everybody to approve what you want. So I'm going to keep looking through this budget, Mr. Turner. Uh, I'll be back next meeting. So since I was muted out, I tried to be muted out, that, that's the way it's going to be. Uh, the serial contract, because things are slid in that the council don't know about, because I, I'm beginning to think that what is happening is if the council don't uh, get the packets in time or start reading in time, thanks, thank Ms. Sandy for getting the packets to us on time. But if, if we don't get them and start reading them, we'll be in the dark because it, it's, it's stuff that's done in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the heat of the night that we don't know about. But you were talking about this the sixty two thousand dollars for um on page eighteen and this ninety thousand dollars for phone service for the water department. I'm trying to figure out what, what is that about. So 
Uh, I'm, I didn't try to start an argument. I'm just looking at this budget clearly. And uh, like I said, Mr. Franklin, I, I don't have the budget in front of me right now. So I don't I don't mind at all giving you some more clarity on uh, each one of those line items. I'm just not able to do it right now. And, and I thank you, Mr. Chairman. It, it was not intended to be an argument. Every time that I'm, 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 you know, just like we, when I asked the question and, and the paper quoted it wrong, I asked you about those officers that we had. And I was clearly asking the question, the reason why we had this money, did I not answer you this, Mr. Turner? The reason why we had this money say is because we, we didn't have officers in those positions, right? And, yeah. and that's, what it, so the newspaper company said, uh, Mr. Kennedy said that I asked uh, something else, but this is what I asked. And, I'm, and that's how we got this money. And my thing is this, I'm trying to make sure citizens understand because guess what? I only have the mic on Tuesday nights, every other Tuesday. So I got to make sure people hear loud and clear. And I hope people report the news the right way, loud and clear, that my goal is to make sure that I explain to people how we got that money and anything else I see in this budget. I'm not trying to run day-to-day -day operations. I'm trying to look at finances. That's what I, that's one of the jobs as a council member is to look at property and finances. So I'm looking at the finances. And if I, if I feel like something's not right, when the treasury report comes up, I'm going to ask it over and over and over again until I get an answer. And Ms. Turner, I thank you. But I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm not trying to play games. I'm trying to. If the citizens sent me here to do a job, then guess what? I'm going to do the job the best of my ability. If I don't know something, that's why we have a city a city attorney, and we have other city council members that I can go and seek advice from who have been here longer than I have. Thank you. Well, Mr. Frank, not like that. I don't have one problem at all from you or any other council members, anybody else uh, asking about anything that's in the treasury report or the budget. So I welcome all questions. I want to, I'm like you, I'd like to explain to people exactly what's going on and uh, how the city is spending their money. So, yeah, and, uh, I, and I thank you, Mr. Turner, but that, that, that uh, IT service that we got, that's a serial contract. And I hate to be called a, a liar or misinformation. Well, Mr. Turner, if it if if, it, if it's if it goes month to month, what is that? If it go for if if it went from uh June of last year to right now, ain't that a serial contract? That's a month to month contract, right around. I think a serial contract um, is something. Well, well let, let, I let Andre answer that. Well, legally, uh, Mr. Franklin, you're correct. I think the council's intent with that is, is that if it's a contract for the same type of thing, uh, that the entire contract should be brought before the council to be bidded. And it shouldn't be broken up into a series. What the ordinance says it shouldn't be broken up into a series of smaller contracts to avoid the overall approval. So a serial contract from city council's language and what the understanding is, is so that the mayors wouldn't get right at the spend limit, spend four thousand nine hundred dollars, and then come back the next month and keep doing it, keep doing it. So that, that, and what you're really doing is defeating the spirit of the ordinance. And so that's why the language was added about a serial contract. So that there wouldn't be a series of contracts for the same service. The service that the city is receiving, in your example, Mr. Franklin, the services for IT. And that that is a entire series of, of contracts, but really it's for one thing, it's for the IT services for the city. So I'll break it up into serial separate parts. If it's over five thousand uh, dollars, the mayor cannot uh, spend it. And if it's over seventy five hundred, it should be bidded. Uh, the issue with it is it is a professional service and doesn't require bidding, it's, but it does require approval over $5,000. Professional services would include IT services, it would include uh, uh, attorney services, it would include engineer services, account services, all those things. Those don't have to go through bidding because uh, you can't bid on that nature of thing. That's a matter of a professional doing a job. And that's, the statute limits what professional services are. Uh, but that being stated, five thousand dollars would be the limit. Anything above five thousand dollars would have to be bidded, and if it falls within that serial contract, uh, then it still would have to be bidded. So that's what you're speaking of. More particular is the fact that it's over five thousand dollars, and I think uh, in looking at the budget, what you just said was the seventy-two thousand was budgeted this year, and that entire thing would have to be bidded, rather than going from company to company to company. Now, what the mayor's position has been in the past is he's more familiar with this than any of us. And what he said so many times out of his own mouth was that he has more experience than, than most of us. And he thinks that it's impractical to do it the way that the council wants it done. 
And what he does is he says that 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 he does a month to month uh, on it because that's the way the business goes versus the way that we had it uh, done in the past, the way the city council had it done in the past. And so, um, with Franklin, that was the the overall uh, that was the overall uh, that was the overall uh, understanding of it when when we, it was brought up before. You've brought this up several times, but that was the discussion that you had with the mayor on the record in the previous council meetings regarding to the nature of it. I don't think the council ever approved any IT services since Crystal Cook's solutions to ask the most of Franklin's question directly. Uh, but it is something that probably should be uh, approved by the city council. Uh, and with that, I yield to either Mr. Turner or Mr. Franklin or whomever else wants to comment. Well, Mr. Valley, since we're on that, I got I got a question. Well, maybe you can't mean I got a question um, about okay, how does this work? When we're under an emergency, uh, and, and the mayor has to get a contract or anybody he has to get, uh, does the spending limit goes out of the door, out the door when we declare an emergency? Does that uh, the, the, the mayor get well, the to spend in the statute that's that's state statute. When the mayor declares okay. an emergency uh, to to handle whatever emergency it is, I previously emailed you all the statute on two occasions re relating to it. I explained it at the last when the water emergency was going on. The mayor yeah. does not have to follow our local policies during the the duration of that emergency. So the water emergency, anything that, that he needs, to, any ordinance that he needs to, to to not comply with in order to get it things done quickly. The emergency de declaration authorizes him to do that, but he still cannot waive any state uh, requirements. And so each time he declares an emergency, when we had the, the COVID emergency that was that was in the court twice, uh, when you had the water emergency, when you had the Easter emergency, and when you had this emergency for um, for the inclement weather, when he does those uh, during the duration of that uh, for a thirty day time period. All city okay. ordinances that 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 uh, that interfere with him effectuating uh, getting everything done for the emergency are, are, are waived. And so, if he needs to spend more than than five thousand dollars to handle something for this this inclement weather, then he's authorized to do so under his emergency declaration pursuant to state law uh, for a period of thirty days. But the the Incoming weather one is only, I think he did 48 hours, and I think he's going to have to extend that because of the, the two extra days of incoming weather we will likely have. Uh, he declared one for 120 days on the water. And so, but the ordinances by statute can only be waived for 30 days. So, right now, and what he called me about it yesterday, and I talked to him about it yesterday, and I informed him that any spending he does according to the emergency, he needs to attach that to his proclamation or so that he so that he would clearly display to the council what he spent that he felt was related to remediating the uh, remediation of the emergency, so that everyone have clarity as to yes, this was not in comport, this does not comply with our ordinances as related to spending or or as related to whatever it would take. But here's the documentation what I've done, so that it will be it won't be later. You're saying. Well, what exactly did you waive? What exactly did you spend? How is this related to it? How is it germane? So, so it could be, there has to be some legitimacy to it. And I'm not saying that they're illegitimate. I'm saying there has to be clarity related to it. And so that everyone would know what, what within the parameter within which uh, he was operating. So, okay. Thanks for that. So can I, can I, this is my next. So if, it's, if, it's, if, if we have an emergency, can you pay a, can you pay a person can you pay them before the job is done or or can you just pay them? How can you, how do you pay the person? So except for instance. Well, payment typically is after the job is done, unless okay. there's some there's some professional services that you have to pay them something up front. A professional services requires some payment up front. Um, some contractors require some payment up front, but the entire thing in, in paid until the work is, is, is completely finished. And so it, it would depend. Uh, I don't know what, what specific, Specifically, you're going towards. Well, well, I, I, you know, this is, and I think that this, the, the, the public should know. I, I and I'm not. I mean, it, this is something I, I, it's, 
I was going to wait to talk about it, but I, I we paid somebody two checks, uh, to I mean, maybe more than that, you know, and it was a ser- series of checks, and I mean, it was thirty five hundred dollars one one day, and thirty five. Well, in the same day, the checks were cut, thirty five hundred dollars, boom, thirty five hundred dollars, boom, seven thousand dollars, and 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 I mean, that's just my thing. Mr. Franklin, you have a right to discuss that in detail. You have the right to ask the mayor, the treasurer, or the, the city clerk about that. That is part of your job. And uh, also, as I said earlier, when I talked to the mayor yesterday, I didn't talk to him about any specific suspending. I talked to him about there need to be clarity whenever he declared these emergencies as to if you're waiving spending, what did you tie to this? And so everybody would have an understanding as to here's my emergency order. Here's the things that I spent. Here's the way I didn't didn't uh, comply with the city ordinance, but I, I was authorized to do so by by emergency order, so that everybody have an understanding as to what money was spent and how it was spent. Uh, but I can email you again the statute, but I've, I've emailed it to you all twice. But the, the, the statute just just says that in particular. But it can it can only while emergency can only last 120 days, the emergency waiver of city ordinances can only last for 30 days. And he still has to be in compliance with, with state law. So it couldn't go over $20,000 uh, with the state uh, spending without bid there. Okay. Uh, I, well, Mr. Turner, can you help me? I, I, I would, since Mr. Valley told me I can answer city, city uh, uh, treasurer. Well, uh, and Mayor, if you would, I see we got professional and uh, legal for $3,500 twice. Then I see again that. I mean, I think if I mean, then we got 153888 for professional service, but it's to a, uh, a bed and breakfast. Well, and if, just, if I can answer some things on, on, on legal, I know of three, I know of four or five legal issues you have, a monthly basis, you, you've previously been updated and approved contracts relating to uh, my brother and the appearance of impropriety. Uh, James Vallis, an attorney, just like I'm an attorney, and Ms. the two deputy prosecutors are professional services right. to deal with the appearance of impropriety relating to. I don't prosecute cases involving my brother because uh, of appearance of impropriety. And the city council has approved contracts for Chuck Hampton and, and Amy, excuse me. Uh, and, and when they approve those contracts, you also have ongoing contract with attorney Vandal Bland, represent the city. You all did mediation last week. Uh, and you have another contract involving the landfill uh, where uh, the city was we're waiting on them to sue uh, for city and, and other entities, St. Francis County. Uh, that you all approved $25,000 last year on that uh, because the trash was being diverted from, from us, from the Helena West on the regional landfill uh, to the Crittenden County regional landfill. And so that legal issue, what you had. Those are the ones I know as far as legal. Uh, I don't know about any other professional services, but I wanted to to speak with clarity on the issues that I knew of that, that we were paying someone, some other attorney to do something for the city. Of course, the municipal league is not professional services. It should be shown the Arkansas Municipal League because they, they're a risk manager. Mr. Wren, while he works contracts with the municipal league, he's paid hourly by the municipal league and not by the city. And so when he was here today, he's, he's on retainer by the Arkansas Municipal League, and that's still covered by the, the money that we just paid. We paid Mr. League three thousand dollars per case when we um, when we do that. Mr. Valley, can I, can I, Mr. Valley. Yes, sir. Uh, I wasn't talking about nothing, nothing like that, Mr. Valley. I'm saying okay. that we we, we had we had, well, so well. I apologize. I, you said you said legal. That's what made me. Mr. Mr. Valley, but this is what this bill says. But it has nothing to do with you, though. This is legal and professional service, $3,500, twice. This is what I'm, I'm asking about. I mean, that has nothing to do with you. This has to do with the hell in the water department. And, and, and that, this is my thing is that when we, when we and, and you know, I know we said, we, I know the mayor said he was gonna bring a former water manager, Jack Ross, back as a consultant, but how you pay somebody before they get here, seven thousand dollars then you pay for their bed, bed and breakfast. So what's that? What's that? This is fifteen hundred dollars. Well, that, that, if, if if it's over five thousand dollars, the city council had to prove it. But if it's not. part of the, 
But if it's part right. of the emergency, then, then he would he would have the details that's part of the emergency. I don't know what thirty five hundred dollars is. I don't have that report in front of me. But, but go well, ahead, Mister Parker. And, and and that's my thing. I, I when that's why I want to make sure, that, and I don't want to jump the gun. That's why I'm I'm you know when you send me the uh, emergency statue, I, I want to get some understanding of it because see this this is the thing that I don't it, it it's just a problem that I have that you know with the water department or with any department that when you do stuff like this keep your keep your people in the know because Mr. Bell, I, when I say legal this is what they got this uh labeled on legal and professional services what you should have put it on is consulting if, if he's going to be the consultant but you pay somebody to step down not consult something that they, 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 but that's that's not that's not under professional services statute. Professional service statute has some specific things that are professional service. I, oh, I, okay. I, I, I would I would research that and give that to you because it, okay. it's, 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 it's certain things that, that are listed specifically in the statute on professional services. Well, Mister, I'm t- I'm gonna email you. I'm gonna scan and email you and the council as well because these things uh, it, 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 this thing says pay to big ass bed and breakfast. You got the check number. Uh, for fifteen thirty eight eighty eight, and then it's got another. It's got, it's got two two checks for thirty five hundred dollars, um, and it's two different check numbers. My thing is this: that's seven thousand nine. Well, I mean, you go, you must go consult the water department to get back on track right now. You know, all the pumps and everything gonna be fixed. They should be fixed for seven thousand nine. Everything you should got that inspected. But how can you get somebody to to give you some insight on the water department when they, when they ain't got no license themselves? Now that's that's daily operation. I'm sorry I stepped on that, but that's what that is. I let the mayor figure that one out, but I'm gonna send the council a copy of all this as well because there's no trust. With, 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 you know, there's no trust with this. I mean, the, 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 the citizens send me here to do a job. I'm gonna investigate. I'm gonna find out what I need to find out, and I'm gonna present it. And if it's wrong, then I leave it up to the. the if, if I'm wrong, I apologize. But I'm not too wrong about this. You know, I mean, it's just like take you take care of my friends. And, hey, and this is what this is, but I, I I'm I'm done. But I make sure each member of the body has a copy. And Mr. Bell, I make sure you get a copy. But uh, you know, this is two separate checks, three separate checks. One for the the bed and breakfast, and a step down. Now, and then I guess we're gonna pay mileage. And I guess that's part of paying mileage to get somebody here to tell you about your water system. And, and, and that's wrong. But you know, I'm I'm done, Mr. Bell. Uh, Mr. Tom, I'm sorry. I, I yield back to uh, Mayor. You can do what you need to do, but I'll bring this out. And I hope he don't find nobody for whatever. I do not think the mayor is still online. I think that someone has to, one of your city council members has to be uh, the pro tem mayor to continue to meet and go forward. Uh, I don't see him, and he hasn't said anything for a while, especially with all the things that Mr. Franklin has been saying. So, uh, will you all nominate someone for, for, for uh, Mayor Pro Tem, and, and uh, so we can keep I going forward? Or, 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 Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem. He texted, stated that he had lost connectivity. Who the mayor? Yes. He ain't lost no connection. Huh? That's that's what you do when you know you're wrong. <laughs> Second. Madam Clerk, will you call the roll on that, please? Ford. Yes, my mind. Yes. Forty one. Okay. Franklin. Yes. Thank Columbia. Crockett? Just leave it alone. Yes. Davis? Yes. Etherly? Abstain. Yeah, four <laughs> yes. Uh, Mr. Mr. Etherly, will you please take over the meeting from here? Um, I, I don't even know what's left on the agenda at this point, but to the extent there is anything left on the agenda, if it's not... Uh, urgent that we take it up, I would entertain a motion to table anything that remains and, and adjourn. I'm the table. Right table. Right there. Uh, Mr. Uh, Ethelie. Yes. Hold on. Hold on. I, I, I didn't get an agenda. 
uh, I, I'd like this though to be a part of the minutes that I, I request that we adhere to the ordinance and I don't have the ordinance number right now, but it deals with the agenda and the council packets. And it says that we should have those packets by 3 p.m. on Saturday preceding the city council meeting. And I'd like to request that that go into the minutes and that we adhere to that, that we start getting our uh, information in a timely manner. Yes, ma'am. Uh, are there any other items that are uh, need to be taken up that are urgent and need to be taken up on this evening? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't have I don't have my agenda in front of me. So so let me say this: uh, Is are there is there anything on the agenda that needs to be tabled until the next meeting? Nothing left on the agenda. Okay, then uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Motion, motion by David, second by Crockett. All in favor say aye. 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 Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.